Alex, let's kind of bounce to talking about this connotation that people automatically assume that, hey, I just had surgery or, hey, you know, I'm dealing with a major injury. I need to cut my calories. Like, why don't you kind of go into that and why that maybe might not be the best way to approach things? Yeah. So I think it's, it makes sense why somebody would think that because if you think about it, okay, going to have surgery, um, usually there's some kind of restriction of movement that is required. Like I know when you, when you got surgery um, on your, your nose and then did you, were you able to, you, you couldn't work out really. They told you not to, is that correct? Yeah. So with when I got my implants done, it was basically like, hey, don't do upper body, which that totally makes sense. Like you're not trying to stretch out. Basically, when they do the implants uh, in your chest, they're creating a capsule for the implant to sit in. And so the entire premise is you you want that capsule to heal. You don't want to stretch out uh, because that's where you're just going to see problems over time where, you know, it's like it's very common for people to be like, oh, you know, if I lay down, my implants might slide towards my armpits or stuff like that. So basically, it it kind of depends what doctor you see. I've, I've heard doctors say, hey, if you get your implants done, I don't want you doing anything overhead for like six weeks. And then I've also heard like longer timelines of, you know, like 12 weeks or three months yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, so it kind of depends who you see and it, how like cautious they are, if you will. Um, but same thing with my nose. They basically wanted you to go five to six weeks without really doing any surgery because with your nose, basically when they do surgery, it actually takes up to like 11 to 12 months for it to fully heal. So even Mm -hmm. though maybe at six weeks, swelling has gone down and maybe at three months, you know, it looks more like the final product, your nose actually stays swollen for a very long time and it's just very, very slow to heal. And so... um, yeah, you know, you were supposed to ideally take time off. And and again, it, it just depends. Like, I feel like surgery stuff can be like the wild, wild west. <laughs> so it's like, I always try to see like a really good surgeon that specializes in whatever you're needing. But yeah, you know, it's like typically you're going to need that time off. And so it's like figuring out what you can or cannot do. So it's like, my doctor was like, hey, you know, you can slowly pedal on a bike, obviously get lots of steps, but like just, you know, rest and relax. But, you know, other surgeries are just going to be different for sure. Yeah. So like people, you know, with the movement restrictions, it could be different, usually sometimes less activity than they're normally used to doing. Um, So, and even if you get injured, right? Because if you get injured too, it's the same kind of thing. Like if you are not able to, let's just say like you have a, like a hip injury or something like that, or a knee, a knee injury, and you're not able to squat and people are like, well, I can't do lower body. And, and they're like, well, am I doing less activity? Do I need less food? So it makes sense. Well, I would say logically, it makes sense to think of like, oh, I need to reduce my calories. But the thing is, is that what we're not thinking about is that your body needs food to heal. And if you undergone an injury or had surgery, your body is in a healing state and it will not heal as well and quick and efficiently and quickly enough if you are underfed. So you know, reducing calories may may seem like it makes sense, but it actually may not necessarily need to happen. And there's a study, I feel like you made a reel not too long ago that talked about it. Um, Is there any studies you kind of want to share about just what, you know, calorie needs and kind of how they might change after surgery? Yeah, so there's several studies. Um, I I cited some on a, a reel that I made. It was mostly dealing with injury, but you know, surgeries and stuff like that, kind of the same boat. Um, I think one of the studies uh, said that your energy... So even if your energy demands decrease, the increase in energy expenditure from the healing process and also, for example, let's just say you have to walk around with crutches uh, or anything like that helps you move. Well, you're changing your movement patterns and your gait patterns and it's hard to walk around on crutches, right? Or you have to wear a boot or something like that. 
And what they found was by reviewing papers is that your energy expenditure can sometimes balance out. So even if you get injured or have a surgery, it balances out because of the demand from healing and also the increased energy demand from uh, using things like crutches, right? So it really... It's, it's tough to say because, yeah, you may need to reduce your calories if it's if indeed, you know, your body mass is going up and you're taking time off the gym. But you shouldn't automatically assume that you need to cut, you know, several hundred calories from your diet because you had an injury. I would play a game more of like, hey, let's wait and see and see what's going on. And then if we need to reduce your calories, reduce calories. 